Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. For many years I've always wanted to get into large format 4x5 film photography but I've just always felt I was so engrossed with 35mm and 120 format as well and getting used to that before I went on to larger formats and it's something that I've always wondered about but of course with large format taking that leap there's always a cost involved and for me in particular it was also uh, how am I going to make prints in my darkroom regularly with a uh, 4x5 enlarger which is quite big I've only got a small darkroom so all, you know the cost and also the size of my darkroom come into a lot of the equation when I was thinking about going large format a 4x5 camera with lenses and the film backs and the film can set you back several hundreds of dollars or even pounds and for me making prints on a regular basis would mean upgrading my enlarger and possibly a bigger darkroom but I always had my mind on starting out my 4x5 journey with a pinhole camera and making contact sheets in my darkroom that way I could experience shooting 4x5 and eventually maybe one day move over. As luck would happen, I started my 4x5 journey a few months ago and being fortunate enough to get my hands on a 4x5 camera and an enlarger combined, a format which I am still in the infancy of getting used to, but it has never stopped me wondering about the 4x5 pinhole and making contact prints. So if any of you guys want to get into shooting large format 4x5 film photography, stick around because I'm going to show you some of the gear that you can get quite inexpensively and also how you can make your own prints in your darkroom without an enlarger. So first up, let's look at some gear options. I'm using a LaRouge 4.5 pinhole camera that was kindly donated to the channel by Instagram and my good friend Gary Geezer. Check out Gary's Instagram profile where he shoots a lot of exquisite nude portraits. Now there are other makes of pinhole camera other than the LaRouge and I saw a great deal online for an Ilford pinhole camera bundle which includes film and paper as well as a sheet film holder that goes on the back. Most of the time when you buy a 4x5 camera you'll need to buy the film holder where you load a sheet of film and attach it to the back of the camera ready for exposure. These are not particularly cheap but should last a lifetime if you look after them. It takes a while to get used to loading a film but it's easy once you get the hang of it. Now most film manufacturers sell 4x5 film that usually comes in 10 or 25 sheets per box, even more. That's down to you what sort of film you choose. But this is pinhole photography, so make sure that the film that you choose has a good reciprocity failure such as Ilford FP4 or Ilford Delta 100. Fomapan films are less forgiving for reciprocity failure and you could be there forever and a day making your exposures. For pinhole photography I normally choose a 100 speed film which on a sunny day gives me exposure times of around about half a second with my pinhole camera. To develop your film you will need a 4x5 developing tank and there are plenty available. I use a Stearman press tank but if you already have a Patterson style tank for your own developing you can get the 4x5 reels that fit inside. Now most of you guys I know are already developing film yourself so just for those that are not into developing yet I'll just list out a few of the things that you'll need um, if you want to just jump straight into large format film photography. So you'll need three jugs with measurement indicators and you'll need a thermometer and also you'll need a film developer such as Ilford DDX which is an already mixed and good developer or for great value for money have a look at Rodnoll or 510 Pyro. You'll also need stop buff and a fixer as well. I've already made videos in the past about how to develop film so I'll put one of those video links in the description if you're new to developing film and you want a little bit more information. So you've already taken your first photograph, you've developed your film, that's come out really nice, you've got a couple of sheet films sitting there, now you want to make some prints. If you've got a bathroom at home it's relatively easy, all you need to do is black out the windows of the bathroom and then you've got your darkroom, all the water's there for you, for washing etc, all you need are the chemicals and a few other bits. So you've already got your fixer and your stop bath but you'll also need a print developer as well. I use Ilford's Multigrade but there are other paper developers such as Photospeed PD5 that is slightly cheaper. You're going to need three trays, one for developer, one for stop bath and one for the fixer. Now these don't have to be expensive trays as you're only making a few small 4x5 prints. So you know you can use sandwich containers or as I used to use cat litter trays. You will want some tongs and I use kitchen tongs for my prints that I got from the supermarket. They're only a couple of quid each and you'll also need a desk lamp to project the light through your film negative onto the paper and you'll also need a red lamp as well so you can see what you're doing. These red lamps you can easily buy online or you can use a red LED strip but you will want to make sure whatever lamp you use it doesn't fog the paper. Now one of the tests you can do to make sure that your red light is safe is just turn all the lights off in your, in your dark room, put a, a small test strip down on on your desktop or your worktop and put a small coin on top of it as well then you want to turn your red light on let that go for one or two minutes I'd say two minutes at least and uh, then turn the red light off 
develop, stop and fix. And then you can turn all the lights back on. If you look at the test piece of paper, if you can see uh, the coin image on the paper, then your red lights aren't safe. That means the coin part is, is pure white and the rest of the paper is slightly fogged. So what you need to do then is to either look at a new design of red light or just dim them down slightly or move them away from the paper. But uh, it's all jiggery pokery, uh, but you'll get there in the end. And finally, you will need some darkroom paper. There's plenty of darkroom paper out there to choose from, and I would suggest at least a 10 by 8 inch in size, so you can fit your 4 by 5 negative print on there nicely. If you want to go all fancy, there are some nice fibre papers out there, but if you want to keep it simple and effective, then resin papers are fine and they're easy to work with. So with all that said, over there I've got a folder full of uh, 4x5 negatives, so I'm going to take a couple and show you guys how easy it is to make a print using a lamp in a bathroom if you've got one, or even in your darkroom, without using a 4x5 enlarger. In fact, you won't be able to enlarge these, they're going to be 4x5 prints, but it's good fun and they can look quite nice when they're framed. So I'm set up in my darkroom ready to make a few of these little tiny contact prints from the 4x5. In this tray I've got my Ilford Multigrade Developer, this one I've got my stop bath and this one I've got my fix and I've kept it all compact just in case you guys are in a bath and you've got a piece of wood over the bath and this is all the space that you can use. So I'm kind of trying to emulate that, obviously I'm in my darkroom but I'm using this small space. This is uh, the glass holder or the negative carrier if you like um, that I made just a piece of glass nice make sure it's all clean and a piece of mat board at the bottom with a hinge with some tape so I can put my paper down my negative flatten it and then shine the light so that's just my desk and this is the lamp I'm using it's just a desk lamp I have this in my dark room all the time to look at my prints and stuff got a little switch up there on my right hand uh, it's connected with this uh, photographic bracket if you like on this thing this grip and I've got the lamp inside there is a 15 watt oven bulb so it's not too bright and it's pointing up here I could actually put some white um, white board or something up here to reflect the light but that's okay it's nice and dim and it gives me longer time exposures on the contact print if I want to do any dodging and burning so uh, that's me lamp there I can just turn it on and off as I please. And just this side of the dark room, I've got a piece of board here which has got fabric cloth on it, nice uh, smooth cloth for putting my negatives on. I've got a little cloth there in case I need to clean them, a little glove, I've got a rocket blower, and over there I've got my negatives. So everything's here that I need. And I mentioned about paper, I use this stuff here a lot of the time. Kentmere VC Select, and it's nine and a half by 12 inches. And what I do is I take this out and I cut it in half and that's enough size for me to have um, two contact prints from one sheet of this paper. So that's the paper that I use is uh, uh, Kentmere VC Select nine and a half by 12 inch. And I've got another empty box here. So I've already cut out uh, my sheets for my contact prints that I wanna make and they're already inside this box along with test strips that I've cut as well because you're gonna need some test strips um, to make your prints. So everything's nice and compact up there. I've got a timer as well, which I'll be using. And on my phone, I've got an app, which is a metronome, uh, so I can count in my seconds while I'm doing a test strip. Because every time I count seconds, I'm always off, off key. So I've downloaded the metronome app, and that just sits in my back pocket on the phone, and I can hear it ticking uh, the seconds as I'm doing my test strip. So I'll show you what I'm up to right now. I'll just show the red lights as well, the safe light that you can use. So these are kind of like old Baker light, um, uh, red lights you can get these on ebay for about 20 or 30 quid uh, these are probably i would say would be ideal for a bathroom i used to use this one in the bathroom and it just sits on the side if you can just run some electricity underneath the underneath the door um, or you might already have electricity in your bathroom if you're lucky enough but in the dark room i use these rgb um, lights here for my red lights they work just as well so leds or something like this but do a little test first like i said the coin test so i've just pulled the negative out that i want to make a print of there it is there four by five neg i'm just handling it carefully and if i can pick it up blimey this is where you need fingernails so i'm just handling the neg carefully just give it a little blow either side with the rocket try and get as much dust off it if it is dusty this one i think is fine uh, that's why i use this soft cloth so i can place this on here all the time and i just need to do some test strips first so you might hear the metronome going on in the background. It's in me pocket, my phone. Down goes the paper, obviously glossy side up or motion side up, and the negative will be also be glossy side up as well. And that will go on top of your paper. I'm just doing a test strip at the moment. So I'll close that. This is what I use to cover the print and then I'll count in. Because I know that this negative is a little bit overexposed, a little bit dense, it's gonna take quite a while 
um, no longer anyway than my larger to make a print because the light source is right up there it's quite dim so I'm gonna go four second intervals let's uh, turn the light on there goes the light see if you can see that it should be able to see it right so I'm gonna do four second intervals listening to the metronome in a minute two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four I'll cover that and turn the light off well that's my test strip let's turn the metronome off I'll just carefully take your negative off and put it back over on the side and if you're real close like I am just be careful not to spill any of the chemicals onto your um, onto your contact printmaker right so I'm just going to dip this in now into the developer and this is going to go for exactly a minute so I'll leave it in there for a whole minute and just make sure that paper does go jet black I could do um, tests against the paper for maximum black I could also do a proper contact um, print on it where I make tests against the fog and base of the rebate of the film but I'm not going to bother with that. This is the way I do it, just normal tests as I would do if I was making a bigger print. Okay, it's ready to come out. You can see these are the tongs that I get from the supermarket. They're only a couple of quid each, and they're ideal for my dark room. The dark room tongs are a bit more expensive than that, and they seem to snap and break. Uh, these ones are metal with rubber ends so they're ideal so that's gone in the stop bath now and then let's done that let's put that into the fixer see how careful I'm being I don't want to spill any of this juice over the um, contact print machine <laughs> or my homemade one so that's in the fixer now all we need to do is get it washed and have a look under the light so there's my contact print there, and remember I did these in four seconds according to the metronome on me on my phone. Uh, four seconds, eight, twelve, and sixteen. So I'm looking at the ground area first. That's four seconds there. That looks quite nice, but the sky is too white. So I need to do a little bit of burning in the sky on my contact print. So four seconds. Where does the sky? That's quite nice there. Nice rich sky. What was that 12 seconds so four seconds i reckon about another six seconds in the sky so i'm going to go four seconds overall and then i'm going to burn in for another six seconds the sky okay so there goes the piece of paper that we're going to print on that's what i've already pre-cut now i'm going to put the negative on top of that give it a blow emulsion side down glossy side up and I'm going to place that, it's up to you where you want to place it, I'm going to put mine just there so I've got a bit of a third at the top and a heavier border, put this down real gentle, that should be good and this is what I'm going to use now to do my burning but first of all I need to let that run for four seconds and then another ten seconds burn that sky in. One, two, three, four five four eight nine roughly about ten that'll do cover the whole lot turn the light off and then carefully take your negative out and put that back where it come from I'll just slide it off the paper now we can put the paper into the developer so about a minute in there see if I can move that camera so you can see it oh you can see it if not I'll show you it afterwards it's developing anyway see how that comes out sometimes they come out nice other times you you know you have to change your seconds a little bit or your time um, but it's still good fun. This is looking quite nice. It's got me tongs. The only trouble is you want to make sure that that paper is nice and black. If you want to pull your print out too early, 
I'm going to pull this now. It looks quite good. If you pull your print out too early, the paper might stay grey, and then your border won't look so nice. Um, but this is a nice black border. Let's get that in the stop. And this is just a photograph that I took on a large format camera, not pinhole, of the fields near where I live, just before Christmas. But I haven't done a contact print with it yet. In fact, I don't think I've, I have printed it. Not a contact. Uh, it's a stop bath. This is now in the fixer. So in there for about a minute, then we'll get it washed. And there's the print. It looks quite nice. So get it washed. So this is just normal water that I'll wash it in. And obviously you guys, if you're in your bathroom, will have an added bonus because you'll have running water. Um, I've got running water in here, but it comes from an outside tap hose pipe into the shed. Um, but you get the idea. So then you can wash your print, hang it out to dry. And in case you're wondering uh, why I didn't show you a pinhole shot, this is one of the pinhole shots that I took um, from a video that I shot uh, just before Christmas. So this is a pinhole of Seascape, really nice uh, looking image there. And that's what I got from a pinhole camera. So another five by four contact print there. And that one there is a 10 by eight paper. But uh, if you want to save paper, you can trim it down. Um, it, you know, it's up to you entirely how you want it to look at the end. But that will still look really nice uh, framed. You can get a mount for that. But 10 by eight, you can already get mounts for those. So that might look quite nice in a ready uh, framed 10 by eight mount. So for years, I've been thinking about getting into five by four, but always, you know, I like printing. I'm not a scanner and Photoshop. I like making prints in the dark room, but I always thought to myself, what's the point if I haven't got an enlarger to go with it? But I always wondered about just getting into it, just creeping, dipping my toe into the water with five by four with a pinhole camera, reasonably inexpensive, and then coming in my dark room and making some contact prints that I can make look nice in frames. And as you can see, all I used was a light source above the um, <laughs> above, above the contact print maker that I made and uh, come out with a couple of nice prints. It's as easy as that. So, you know, if any of you guys are interested about dark room works and particularly five by four, then that's quite a nice way to get into five by four and make some prints at the same time. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put a few links in the description of this video um, if you're interested in getting into five by four and uh, by all means anyone uh, watching this video that's already shooting five by four that can add to this uh, for anybody else please do so in the comments I'd appreciate it I'll catch you next time